Hello and welcome back to Jarvis Johnson. That's me. I'm Jarvis Johnson. And love is blind. Okay, so I wasn't sure if I was going to make this video. I had considered making a video about Love is Blind season two because I made a video about the first season. And... I was on the fence about it. That is until I saw the reunion. And the reunion goes so hard that I am not even gonna talk about the season at all. I'm just gonna talk about the reunion. And I'm gonna give all the context you need. You don't need much. We're talking about Shake. He's a, it's, it's a, oh boy. Hey, future drivers from, I don't know, five minutes into this video, spoiler alert, Love is Blind for the Uncultured is a marriage game show in which you get married after talking to a wall. You talk to a person through a wall who you can't see, and then the connection becomes so strong and you are so uh, Stockholm syndromed into the reality game show that you get married <laughs> and then you regret it afterwards. So people date behind these walls where they can't see each other and then they go to a resort and they kind of simulate cohabitating and life together and then they go out into the real world and try to make it work and in three weeks they've got to get married and so that's the big pressure will they get married won't they get married what sort of toxic shit is going to happen in the meantime real quick i want to give uh le petit disclaimer about what we're doing here. I'm goofing and I'm gaffing and I'm talking about characters in a reality show. Yes, there's some overlap between the characters and the real people, but the real people are in control of how they're edited by the show. So I'm making fun of actions, I'm making fun of what people say, but do not harass or even talk to the people that I'm talking about, especially not on my behalf, because that's not how we do things here. You never know how people are gonna take that. And we're just doing good old fashioned, good faith, goofs and gaffs. Okay, we good? <laughs> All right, let's, let's keep going. The show features a eccentric cast of characters like Shane, who sounds like a cartoon. There's something about your voice. <laughs> That's what everyone keeps telling me. I may talk about those people a little bit, but I really want to focus on Shake. I'll be Shake, I go by Shake. Who is a, mmm, ooh, he's like, He's like concentrated misogyny. <laughs> the sheer power of Shake's Alpha Bro podcaster vibe is enough to radicalize a thousand Redditors. My first impression of Natalie is I thought this was a girl that I kicked out of a club once. The whole point of the show is to find love without seeing the person that you're dating. And that's not good enough for Shake. He's like, actually though, can I see them? I love buying clothes for girls. Yeah, what's your size? <laughs> what the fuck? Which, hey, you're attracted to who you're attracted to. But it's the way that he goes about it in the just general douchey vibe of him as a person. How old are you? 33. I prefer dating younger. How old are you? I'm 32. He immediately scares away almost every potential partner on the show, except for one, Deep D, who is one of God's angels. She takes an interest in Shake. They share a similar culture. Neither of them have ever dated an Indian person before them, both being Indian. It's a cool exchange. You start to, you know, he gets a he gets a good edit because he has this alpha bro mentality at the start, and then you start to see this change in him because of his relationship with Deepti and you're like, oh, you know, maybe there is hope. No, there's no hope actually. There was. I really did. There's no change. There's there absolutely was. I actually Turns out first impressions are all that matters <laughs> because despite the fact that Deepti actually is able to look past all of the snide and weird comments that Shake keeps making to her and about her. If we were to be at a music festival, do you like being on a guy's shoulders? Yeah, you're up for the challenge, you can pick me up. <laughs> yeah, but um, will I have trouble picking you up? Shake is disrespecting Deep D behind her back. He doesn't feel physically attracted to her when they meet, and he will not stop talking about it. It feels like I'm with my aunt or something. <laughs> like, like... And I can't stress enough, his crime is not that he's just not attracted to someone. That's that's normal. It's like he's running like a smear campaign <laughs> against Deepti for no reason. Deepti is 
committed no crimes. She's done nothing wrong. In fact, she is a saint through all of this. And so anyway, as the season is going on, Shake is just like, I'm not attracted to Deep D. She's like my aunt. Uh, I hate her, whatever the fuck he is. Just so anyway, the whole season, Shake is like, I'm not attracted to Deep D. Uh, she's like my aunt. But also being like, we have this amazing friendship connection. We have, you know, this connection that I've never felt with anyone. And so you're like, okay, maybe there's something there. Uh, but there's a really telling moment when they're introduced to each other's parents and Shake's mom is like no i'm actually siding with deep on this one being very frank i'm very much identifying with her right now more than you like you as my son suck and i don't know where i went wrong but <laughs> but i'm gonna protect deep d uh with every fiber of my being she Ooh. doesn't deserve someone who gives her even half a percent less I haven't mentioned this. Shake is also a DJ. I'm a veterinarian, actually. <gasps> I love that. I'm also a house DJ. It really does paint the picture. And flash forward, yesterday he posted about starting a podcast on his Instagram. Alpha Bro Podcaster is just his, like, his template, his, his, his character class. He cannot stop himself from, uh leaning into this stereotype the only thing that he has going for him is that he's a veterinarian and works with puppies which is great honestly that's all he has going for him and even that even that he's making veterinarians and puppies look bad so this takes us to the end of the show the big wedding moment where it's the will they won't they and the whole time you're like please for the love of god deep d do not marry this man and miraculously she doesn't. I hope you know how much you mean to me and the impact that you've made on my life. But no, I cannot marry you. She says no, we all rejoice. I deserve somebody who knows for sure. So I'm choosing myself. Shake is probably embarrassed, uh, but completely brushes that off and is like, we got a party because it's all his small brain understands. You know, you have to be like academically smart and stuff to, to go through uh, medical school to become a veterinarian. Animal medical school? I don't know how it works. I assume I ass you need to know things. Much like I have a computer science degree and do this for a living, some of us take a wrong turn in life. So Deep D stands up for herself and it's a wonderful moment. That's pretty much the end of their story until the reunion where shit hits the fan and uh, sprays shit all over Nick and Vanessa Lachey, the host. And the contestants as well. Metaphorical shit is going everywhere. Shake's performance in the reunion had me literally screaming at my <laughs> at my TV while I was watching it. I just let out guttural yelps <laughs> and, I, and I'll show you why. It starts out with them talking about their reservations or, or concerns about the show. And Shake immediately is talking about how he's going to be edited. And that's his, that's his concern. I'm nervous about how we get edited. That's what you're going to lead with? And it's a bit of a self-report. He saw the show. He realizes what happens when his face is on camera. Is he going to avoid a bad edit? No, because everything he says is bad. So something that's super obvious in the reunion is how much disdain everyone has <laughs> for Shake. Like every time he talks, everyone is like, shut the fuck up, Shake. <laughs> it like, it almost doesn't make sense how mad they are at him just at the first moment he opens his mouth. But I have to remember, we have to remember that it's been months since the show aired and now everyone's aware of Shake's true colors and also the stuff that was cut out of the show. Apparently he made some really fucked up comments about Deep D and about other people. And so he's just on a very short rope. Like no one is having it with him. You went straight to a, like a victim mode right away. I'm not a victim, you know, baby. You could, I know, well, you, that, that's what you sounded like. Another thing Shake does in this reunion is insert himself into literally everyone's business. <laughs> it's like he has taken it upon himself to let everyone know what he thinks of their relationship when the hosts are just asking people to share about their experience. That, that's, that, that's not what I mean can by I, that. Can that's, I just say something, oh Shane? God. Sorry to interrupt Jesus. you. I, this, this so he just interrupts Shane, who who does suck, admittedly, but, um, and just like, I don't know, just spills out his whole manifesto about love, which no one asks for. Th this show is about finding love, okay? And 
the way as I see it. As long as she can get on your shoulders. <laughs> All right. I would like that, and I stand and by that. Size zero. Actually, thank you. <laughs> so what he's trying to say is the show is about finding love, not particularly finding a wife, which literally the show is about marriage. So that's not necessarily true. It's not about rushing into something with like it's literally a skip, about skipping, a you know, steps like, you know, three through 20 to get to the end goal. He also says the show isn't about skipping steps in a relationship, which again, wrong. That's literally what the show is. Shake, that's the point of the that's show. The, yeah, that's I know. actually it's not what the show is. You get married to somebody, potentially after dating them for a month. It sounds like what he's talking about is traditional relationships, which it also are relationships where you could see the person that you're dating. So I just think that he doesn't realize that he's on a game show. Well, okay, that, maybe that was the point of the show, but like that's not the takeaway I had. And, and I think it's a very reasonable takeaway, if I Did may say so. Did you read the so. description before going on? And then he concedes, okay, maybe I'm wrong, that that is how the show is, but that's not my takeaway. <laughs> and it's like, you interrupted someone else to make this point. Why did you do that? I could watch five hours of <laughs> people making pained looks as, as Shake is talking. Some of these people I don't like, at least as they're presented in the show, but it is so cathartic to watch everybody not having it with him. The premise of the show is if the connection is strong enough to marry the person you that you have, have that connection hey, with. I'm not gonna be put in a box where I have to do that. I'm not gonna be put in a box where I can't see my partner while I decide to marry somebody from inside of a box where I'm just looking at a blue wall. I'm not gonna be put in that box. I'm not gonna be put on Love is Blind season two. It's like, Shake, I do not know how to break this to you, but you're on it right now. It keeps it real. No, that's not real, man. That's real. just- It keeps it real. It's just, you see, you see why he's insufferable, right? You see, so you see. Darman style, <laughs> he's insufferable. Ugh, it's so funny. People who are generally like meek and soft-spoken are like, shake, I hate everything about you. I hate <laughs> I hate you with every fiber of my being. Um, I never want to see you or hear from you again. And that's why I've unfollowed you. It's why I've <laughs> taken out a restraining order. Dude, yeah, I unfollowed you because you're so unbearable oh. and you think everybody thinks the same way as you. And that's the problem. No yeah. one thinks the way you think. Of all the villains of reality television, I've never seen something quite this strange. I'll be honest with you guys, this has been an incredible experience, but I've had a very tough time taking it seriously. It's funny because I think that this is one of the first times that someone has truly been like a meta, like reality, or that I've seen somebody be super meta on one of these shows, where it's like, I understand why he doesn't take it seriously. If he didn't, if he didn't suck so bad, I think that he could raise some interesting points about about the show and about the like motivations of people on the show. And also the, the fact that it is a farce, like the, the show is really self-important. It takes itself so seriously. They keep talking about how it's an experiment when it's not, it's just, a, it's just a reality concept. It really is funny because the messenger, it's a situation where like the messenger is so deplorable that <laughs> that like it doesn't even matter that he has a point because <laughs> everyone just wants him to shut up. And then the show like has a moment of, of peace where they, you know, talk about people's relationships and the heartfelt things that happen back and forth. And uh, oh. Uh, what's that? Shake's got something to say. And I'm I'm really sorry if I made you feel that way. I, that and I forgive right. you. And I forgive you because it's like that it's was, again, it's in the yeah. past. It's okay. May I? Hey, um, I like to. Could I? Would you mind if I derailed things again? The most ridiculous thing about this is that um, Salvador, this guy, is talking, and he's like, "Hey, uh, I really don't want to talk about this. I want to keep it private. All of this is in the past. I don't need to air out this dirty laundry." Which you know, is indicative of someone who who really is on the show for the right reasons, you know, the big reality phrase. And then Shake, and then Shake is like, mm, but what if we actually talked about it though? Whatever it was, it was soured, whether it was on purpose or not. Shake, he literally just said, not wanting to air out dirty laundry, stuff like that. Why do you feel a need to come in and say that? He interrupts people. And then when someone tries to interrupt him <laughs> because he's completely out of pocket, he literally, Told Shane to shut up. I feel like you're just trying to break people down. 
I'm not trying to break people down. I'm tr I'm trying to put it out in the open because what I've seen, Wait, for what I've seen. Shut up, Shane. And it's like it's so fucked up. Just like the 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 mansplain energy here. It's it's just he's too powerful. The craziest part of this is that he makes me feel empathetic towards Shane, who sucks. <laughs> he's so awful in the show, and I'm like. Oh, don't do that to Shane. Wait a second. <laughs> I don't even like him. What I've seen uh -huh. is a bunch of people that were so real in the beginning turn fake as fuck as we've gone through this. You've been it's the fake not. as fuck. You've been oh, the fakest person from the I'm beginning. The don't start that, I'm the realist, Jared. That. I say the don't facts. Start that. I keep it 100, the bro. I've always, bro. I've always kept this completely 100. It is. It makes me so uncomfortable when he says things like, I keep it real. I keep it 100. I'm just like, you can't, you can't, you can't say that. You're so bad at saying that. <laughs> it just feels so unnatural coming out of your mouth. I keep it a hundred, bro. It's like, all right, dude, you're a veterinarian. <laughs> like literally relax. What is happening? Can you imagine, can you imagine taking your dog uh, to, the, to him as a vet? And he's like, I'm sorry. And maybe you're going to hate me for this because I'm so real and I speak truth and I keep it a hundred. But you got to change your puppy's diet, my guy. All right, let, let's just get back on track, shall we? Joke. Can we? Let's just let's just get back on track. I'm actually moderating the reunion show. Vanessa Lachey, what was it like hosting the show for you? Would you would you like to speak on that? Then we reach the climax of the reunion, which is when it actually shakes time to speak. I know before now, it has seemed like every time was shakes time to speak, but this is actually when they cover his uh, relationship and just. It just, ooh, just, mm, just a immediate crash and burn. I love buying clothes for girls. Yeah, what's your size? <laughs> Would you like working out? Yeah, not a huge fan. Really? What's truly disgusting, and I am one to not, I don't want to throw out any sort of uh, language that seems like I'm psychoanalyzing shake but he is very self-absorbed let's just say that and so the way that he is <laughs> looking at this video of him disrespecting women and being like like having his misogynist tendencies and then him just like gleaming he's just beaming looking at himself hello and welcome back to jarvis johnson that's me. So then Shay goes completely mask off and compares marriage to a purchase. It's not that different than making a huge purchase. For me, that meant I knew a, at least a certain physical body type to get me in the ballpark. And I mean, I knew I needed, you know, the apple bottom jeans and the boots with the fur. <laughs> it's like, I knew that that was what I needed. I need the whole club to be looking at her. Um, and that's coming from my heart. And while Shake is going full red pill, the entire <laughs> the entire cast is like, dear lord. And so he keeps he keeps going, you know, I want this shit to work. And, but he's only talking about it in the context of like a physical attraction, which is important in a relationship. Talking about I want this shit to work. I if 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 I were to marry somebody and and you know, there was a big weight discrepancy. It would be very hard for me to get past that. And when I'm in a situation- I understand what he's trying to say, but it's really just the way that he says it. He doesn't really talk about anything other than uh, the, phys the physical connection. It is a little bit cathartic that like Deep D is earnestly laughing most of the time that Shake is talking. And I think it's because people are being confronted with like what she was dealing with and uh, and that makes me, that makes me smile, to be honest. Oh, and if you think it can't get worse, it absolutely can, and it will, and you're about to see it. So then Vanessa Lachey posits, you know, what we're all thinking. Why did you do the Love is Blind show, the show where you can't see the person? Because clearly seeing the person is one of your most important things, and, uh... And you won't shut up about it. So like, what's the deal? Why are you here? It is in this moment that something that I have never seen happens, where... Vanessa Lachey breaks frame and just goes in on Shake <laughs> like she has also had enough. Because at the end of the day, what if she's dismangled in an accident? What if she gains weight? What if she loses her hair, her legs, and her arms? Are you not going to love That's her anymore? Different. I hope to God if I'm dismangled, knock on fucking wood. 
this man stands by my side, and I know he will because he loves me for me. So the problem I have, and I've never seen the host berate a contestant before, and it is the best thing I've ever seen. It's so good. I just didn't know that was allowed. <laughs> I didn't know that you could do that. Jake, is that you sat there and berated every single one of these women physically, and then went through the process with this beautiful soul over here, She's a beautiful all because soul. you wanted someone that you wanted to fuck. And what does Shake do? I bet you can't guess. What Shake does is he, out of nowhere, is like, I'm sorry, but the only person I'm attracted to in this room is Vanessa Lachey. We all have our physical preferences. Listen, every woman here is beautiful. I think you're all beautiful. I'm not attracted to all of you. Unfortunately, the only one I'm attracted to is Vanessa. And it, oh you know- God. He's like, actually, when you were yelling at me, that was kind of hot. Are you free later? Love is not purely blind to me. Great, but then that's why I said. I but all I said was you were on the wrong dating show. But I want it to be partially blind. Love is blurry, well, why okay? Don't you Maybe love is blurry. And that is one of the potential names of his podcast, which I voted on on his Instagram story. So let's you don't be choose. better. You don't choose. It's nature, baby. We're animals. We're animals. No, you treat animals. We're human beings. Oh! We're still Bars. Dude, Nick Lachey is, he hasn't gone this hard since 98 Degrees has hit single. <laughs> I don't even, I can't even, I can't even list uh, 98 Degrees. He hasn't even gone this hard since 98 Degrees. Nick Lachey hasn't gone this hard since the song True to Your Heart from the Mulan soundtrack. <laughs> the most respect you see Shake show through this entire thing is when Nick Lachey roasts him, which just makes me think that he feeds off of being insulted. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so weird. Oh, oh, damn, Nick, yeah. that, that. Oh. And finally, Deep D gets to say her piece where she just lays into shake and it's everything that we love deep d for i just want to say it's, it's okay to not be physically attracted to somebody guess what there's a million other people who are it's the way you go about life it's how you do it and how you say it that's extremely disrespectful it's degrading to women and beyond what was shown we know about all the things that you said congrats to her for carrying herself like an absolute queen throughout this um whirlwind of Hurricane shake, <laughs> but that's pretty much where the reunion winds down, at least on the shake front. Now I did go to his Instagram and it is a dumpster fire as you may have assumed. It's mostly just him posting Instagram stories about people who believe him. Shake was right propaganda. Lots of like, I tell it like it is. I'm speaking the truth that nobody else wants to hear. And the funny thing is he reposts a lot this account that I think is just a meme account that Shake himself runs while pretending that he doesn't run the account. I don't know this for sure, but it's very strange. You didn't harm anyone. You hurt people with honesty. So you did harm someone. So <laughs> like, like harm and hurt, okay. You ain't a bad dude, you're a hundred percent real. Love is blind, Abhishek Shake Chatterjee calls out twat Nick Lachey after bombshell season two reunion. My last post about the reunion got taken down. Censor much? Didn't know we're living in communist China? I don't know, dude. This is, it's, it's rough. It's like, I don't know, this dude sucks. Anyway, that's all I have about this dumpster fire of A Love is Blind Season 2. I wasn't sure how I was going to talk about it, but then the reunion came out and then I knew. I hope you enjoyed this kind of quickie that I felt like I had to address. On a positive note, out of nowhere, because it wasn't covered in the season, Kyle says that he wished that he proposed to Deep D, and apparently they're dating now, and that's pretty cool. And Shake is shit posting online. But real love is happening behind the scenes and on TikTok. I think they posted a TikTok together. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. <laughs>